Hey, I'm Vosk. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to deploy some of your capital, specifically if you have Ethereum, right? And this is basically Ethereum staking or running an Ethereum validator node, but you don't need as much Ethereum as you would normally, significantly less. So basically reducing the capital constraints, right? And easing that barrier to entry. And the project that's doing this is called Stator. They've got their own token. So by using their node platform and process, not only can you start staking Ethereum with only four ETH, but you also simply put get bonus rewards in their token as well. And if that goes somewhere, great. If not, it's basically free tokens doing what you already wanted to do anyway. So let's just jump right into it, right? We're gonna be utilizing all nodes and I'm gonna show you how to do this with the test net, but the process is the exact same with the main net, but I encourage you to test it out with the test net because then you can ensure everything's going right as uh, you know, at least to me, for Ethereum is a serious chunk of change. And you'll also need some stator tokens as well. Also a huge thanks to stator for making today's video possible. So right now at the time of recording this, you need about four Ethereum and you need about 1,130 SD or Stator tokens. And the estimated rewards right now monthly are 40 bucks in ETH and 16 to $325 in SD. A key note about the SD token amount is it's actually pegged to Ethereum not in some kind of weird algorithmic way like the token changes in quantity, but you need 0.4 ETH tokens when you deploy your node. So last week, that was 1,000 something. This week, it's 1,100 something. Next week, it could be a different quantity, but just so you understand that, you essentially need 4.4 ETH or a little bit more to cover the transaction fees in this equation. Let's just simply call it five ETH. And this data is per all nodes, a third party, right? So that's essentially an APR of 4.17% on ETH plus 2.15% to the 24.7% APR in the SD tokens. Remember, your Ethereum rewards are different or separate, I should say, than the SD rewards. And while we're gonna be using all nodes, you can also just deploy your own node if you'd like to do so. You can see on screen here the different hardware recommendations for running a node. Uh, this is important for two reasons. One, if you're going to deploy it yourself. Two, if you're going to just rent a VPS somewhere else. Or just to have an understanding of it. Whereas, you know, if you use something like all nodes, they just kind of make, make it the easy button. They handle all that stuff behind the scenes. Because uh, it's very critical that your node is operating properly. Because if it's going down, if it's not performing as it should, you get slashed, which means you're penalized and you lose rewards. So you're going to end up losing money instead of making money or even more importantly, stacking up some of your coin. Here's what's crazy, though. If you put it into perspective, right, if you were going to rent this server from, say, AWS or Google or some of the other VPS providers, the hardware specs that they ask for are three to four hundred dollars a month. And if you use something easy like all nodes, and I'm not trying to sound like an all nodes ad, never even talked to those guys, whatever. They just got not only a good product here that's been working well in our testing, but even more so, it's like insanely cheap. It's in the why not try this so cheap category. Do I want to spend hundreds of dollars per month or $5 a month plus a $5 set fee, set of fee? I mean, yeah. And if you want to get wild, they have an advanced enterprise plan. Look at it, 10, 20 bucks a month. As far as paying for these services, right, with all nodes, you can pay with crypto, which is obviously cool, and really in a way should be required for something like this, in my humble opinion. You can also use a credit card, PayPal, and bank transfers. But alas, let's actually get started on doing this. I mean, I'd love to hang out and talk to you all day, but uh, maybe you don't feel quite the same. Which is, as a reminder, it's also why we always have timestamps. Use the timestamps down in the video description below or the video uh, little bar on the bottom uh, to skip around, refer back to this. I hope you find this a very useful guide. Allnodes also has a page with a bunch of written information 
on this process as well. So I'll drop that in the video description below. Signing up is quick and easy. It's basically just your email and you click the confirmation link. A key note with the sign up on all nodes, you can also generate a seed phrase here to sign up or log in. And for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be utilizing the seed phrase option. Then we can go over and click on the host option. You'll quickly see stator uh, at the top of this list. It'll bring you back here, you click host. And uh, now we're going to choose if we're going to be using the main net or the test net. At that point, you proceed, you connect your Ethereum wallet, right? They support Ledger, Trezor, MetaMask, Coinbase, Trust, and even Wallet Connect. Uh, so you should, you should have one, you should have an option. I think MetaMask is a great option for something like this, but cold storage is great, specifically Trezor, because uh, if you have Ledger's recovery enabled, they like might just give your coin to somebody else. Now, just be advised. All right, so we click proceed, we connect our Ethereum wallet. In this scenario, we're going to be using uh, MetaMask here. So you can see I've already got the ETH and the SD tokens that I need here. Then you're gonna get a warning and I always heed warnings in cryptocurrency. Uh, so this is an alert for duplicate transactions. Basically, you know, the transaction may take a while to go through depending on the Ethereum network this, that, whatever, do this once. Do not do it twice. They're literally warning you, saying, don't do this twice. Now we're gonna register our wallet address in Stator. So we're gonna get our node address, you put in your operator name, and you can join the social pool, whatever the hell that is, if you'd like. Uh, but it's actually a pretty cool thing. It's basically like a mining pool, if you're familiar with that, but for node operators, uh, to put it simply, all the rewards are going into the pool and then people get paid with much more regularity. Otherwise, you only get paid when your node hits a reward, which to put it simply is just infrequent, but consistent. You'll be paid out in regular intervals as a node operator, but those are not going to necessarily be short intervals. You can also opt in and opt out of the socializing pool via the node with these commands. And I think it goes without saying that I'm gonna be linking out their Gitbook so you can easily access everything I'm showing you in this video uh, to copy and paste as opposed to, uh, you know, typing it all in by hand. Over the last week, they changed from Gitbook to Docosaurus, as you can see here. So this is a quick update we're making, you know, as we edit the video. Uh, the, the key thing here, though, is that the entire process is the same. They're just using a different platform to host the written tutorial. So to check this out, it's pretty interesting and unique. We will be joining the socializing pool. We're going out to party tonight, me and all the other node operators. And uh, you can also select the option to use a separate address for withdrawing rewards if you'd like to do so. To keep this simpler, we're just not going to do that today. So now finally, we're gonna click register. It will prompt us to complete a transaction and we're going to select the aggressive option in MetaMask. This increases our transaction fee, but this will help us get our node online sooner. We can start earning rewards sooner. And even more importantly, you know, we have less of an issue of the transaction not going through soon or a long time or, or whatever else. I mean, th this is a high priority thing, so we're going to pay a high priority price. Enjoy it, ETH holders, because uh, that's why Ethereum developers, I personally think, keep all the fees high and don't solve their scaling problem because all of the Ethereum spent on transactions is burnt, making ETH actually deflationary. So long-term ETH heads and big time holders and stuff like that, well, uh, they're gonna be laughing all the way to the bank because uh, I, can, uh, I can't guarantee it, but pretty much that Ethereum's gonna hit a crazy new all-time high in the next crypto bull run. Uh, so I got, a, I got some ETH in this, so I'll be there for that. But anyway, so we see our transaction pop up on the block explorer and then pretty quickly it went through within a minute and that's great to see now it's going to ask for our approval on the sd tokens of course we will click approve so they can interact with our sd tokens here we'll get prompted with the wallet transaction uh, we'll go ahead and click uh, yes or confirm uh, then that Transaction will be submitted, waiting, and indexing, and success. 
Uh, so that went through pretty quickly here as well. Now it's gonna ask us to deposit our SD tokens because it can now access those tokens in our wallet. We basically gave it approval to do that. There's no reason to put some kind of weird balance in here. Uh, we're just going to put in the minimum SD token quantity there, which will then prompt another transaction. We will go ahead and click confirm and then success, we're in. Now it's time to host a validator. In our testing, we've only used the advanced one. And I think that you can get by with the basic one, but I don't want to get slashed. There's, you know, a very clear node penalization aspect at play. Uh, so having a server with good uptime and good specs is just going to be mission critical here. And we also don't even get an option to test any of the other servers in the test net with go early. So let's spin it up. We'll click host user action is required. So let's click to resolve. At this point, we're going to download our validator key. We will put in our password, confirm it, and then it will prompt the download. We'll get a .json file. And at that point, we will confirm that we've got it. So yeah, I successfully downloaded it. You get the slashing warning, which we've already kind of talked about what slashing is. But I understand and agree to not launch the same validator node with this key elsewhere. Otherwise, it will trigger a double sign followed by slashing for breaking the rules basically if you try to get the rewards of two nodes with the collateral of one you know and this is just on eth nodes across the board you'll be penalized so we say yep we're not going to break the rule so now we will go ahead and make our ethereum deposit so we click deposit for eth and then we will go ahead and bump up the transaction to aggressive yes confirm success completed that's what i'm talking about and so that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. We are now waiting in the stator validator queue. Myself and Joel on our team have done extensive research on just the best options for deploying nodes right now, especially on stator. And Joel in particular dug really deep. He did a cost analysis. You know, we were looking at different hosting providers. We were looking at all nodes, looking at a DIY hardware deployment. And with just the simplicity of this all nodes deployment, I mean, it's just kind of like a why not? I mean, if you've got the ETH and it doesn't take too much SD token and you know, you nobody know knows for sure, right? But hopefully, you know, the stator deployment will pay off in the long run and if nothing else it it just severely reduces your collateral requirement and it's great that all nodes is a separate entity than say stator right imagine if stator was running their own all nodes thing well then you have like the conflict of interest there could be some kind something a little more shady grand scheme kind of thing going on uh, but in this scenario i mean you're getting your keys uh so what we have here is basically decentralized staking uh, we have deploying capital, getting your money working for you. Instead of lending your coins out to some centralized entity that could rug you or go bankrupt, doing something like this helps you earn interest, passive income every month, all while maintaining you know, the proper control and custody of your cryptocurrencies. So if you have any questions on uh, deploying your own stator node, let us know down in the comments, join the Discord server, or post a thread on Bosscoin Talk or Forum. And uh, we're gonna close out this video in style with our CNO. That's gonna be our chief node officer here at the Bosscoin YouTube channel. We run 10 seconds of tales on every video, if for no other reason than to remind you that you should subscribe and stick around. Hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, this is a technical one, but it's actually pretty easy. And uh, if you got the coin, why not?